Here I have on this page a fancy switcher as I like to call it. You can also call it a toggler and you have probably seen this on websites before. You can use this to maybe switch between light mode and dark mode or whatever you want. And this is built with just HTML, CSS and absolutely zero JavaScript. The goal of this video isn't just to show you how to build a switcher like this, but also so you can learn one or two things about HTML and CSS. So we'll be starting with this. Here we have a div with a class of switcher block and then we have this input here with a type of checkbox and an ID of switcher and here we have a label and for the four we have switcher which means this label should be attached to this input with an ID of switcher. Now, as you can see here this label currently doesn't have any text let me just put the text there so you can see but we actually don't need any text here and the first thing we're going to do is to style this label so here I'm going to say switcher block and then the label in the switcher block I'm going to say display block and then I'm going to have a custom property called color and the reason why I'm using this custom property because it's very flexible and allows me to change values easily so by default I'm going to have the custom property to be black then I'm going to have another variable called container width 100 pixels now for the width of this label I'll use the var function and pass the container width and for the height of this label I'm going to use the calc function because I want to do some calculation and then I'm going to have var which means the value of the container with custom property and then divide by two and then for this label i'm also going to have a border of one pixels solid i'll use the var function again and my custom color property another thing i want to do is a border radius and i'm just going to use 10 pixel now i don't really need to see this input type of checkbox the reason why i'm just using this is because that is how i'll be able to control this label so what i can do is i can say switcher block and the input should have a scale of zero and also it should have a position of absolute and the reason why I put the position of absolute is if I comment this and I refresh you can see the input has a scale of zero but the input is still somewhere here but if I put a position of absolute it's going to leave the flow of the items in the DOM and watch what happens to the label you see the label now goes up the next thing we want to do now is to create the cycle inside this label label and this is where I'm going to use an after sudo element so here I'm going to say switcher block label and then I have an after sudo element and coming back to this label I'm going to put a position of relative because my after sudo element is going to have a position of absolute so here I'm going to have an empty content which makes the after sudo element to appear and then I'm going to have position absolute then I'm also going to have a size custom property and the value of this size custom property is going to be calc var and i'm going to have container width which is coming from here divide by oh no there's an error here this var shouldn't be repeated multiple times so i have container width and then i have divide by two let's just start with this we might need to change it later so now the after studio element can have a width of the size it can also have a height of the size and then we can have a border radius of 50 percent if i refresh this we don't see anything yet that's because the after studio element doesn't have a background color so let's put the background color we use the var and we use the color custom property which again is coming from here by the way if you want to learn more about custom properties i have a video on that i'm going to leave it in the video description below custom properties are just like variables in css they begin with a double hyphen and then you have the custom property which is the variable name and using the var function you can use that variable or custom property wherever you want now let's refresh this where is our cycle oh the cycle is not here yet because we need to have a top of let's just say top zero left zero for start and now let's refresh this where is the cycle uh, the cycle isn't showing because we use switch block here instead of switcher block phew now if we refresh finally the cycle is here so we have the cycle here but you can see the cycle is a bit bigger than the container so for this size after dividing by two i'm going to remove let's say five pixels and then for the top i'm also going to have top one pixel left one pixel and i refresh and now this looks good if i make this minus four pixel yeah this looks just about right so now we have this i'm also going to come back to this label and put a cursor of pointer so that the mouse can change to this now in next 
next thing I want to do is when you click on this, the cycle should go to the right. And this is where we are going to use this input checkbox. So if I come back to this input checkbox and I uncomment this, you see we have this checkbox here. And one thing with HTML checkboxes is that you can, if you click on it, the state would change to checked. And if you click on it again, the state would change to unchecked. And the beauty about this state is that we can use that state to control this label. And what I mean by this is we can say switcher block input and then I can use the checked pseudo class and this pseudo class allows me to match inputs that are currently in the checked state. So I can say once the switcher block input is checked then I want to select the sibling label. This is the sibling combinator that allows you to match the sibling that comes after an element. So here we're matching the label that comes after this input and then by matching this label I can get the after pseudo element. Then I can change the left property and here I can say calc. I use var again container width divide by two which means it should move by half. Now if I come here if I check this input you can see that this after pseudo element now applies this style. The input is checked and we apply this and if I click this input again you can see it goes back and also for the fact that we attach this label to this input it means I don't even have to click this input. I can click the label itself and watch. You can see the input is checked just by clicking the label and clicking this again it goes back. So now I can come back to my input and I can hide it because I really don't need it. I just needed it for its state features. So now that I have this next thing I can do is apply a transition on this after pseudo element. I'm going to add transition and for the transition I want to transition the left property and let's just use 300 milliseconds. So now watch you can see currently the input is checked even though we actually don't see the input and by clicking this again it goes back. Next thing I want to do is to change the border color. So currently the color property from here is black but another thing I can do is that again on the switcher block when an input is in the checked state I want to select the label element and change the color custom property to green for example. You can use any color here. You can see again why I like custom properties right. I just need to change this variable and this variable would be applied wherever I use var color. Also for my transition I'm going to say border color 300 milliseconds and now let's come here if I click on this you can see the color changes to green and if I click on this again the color changes back to black. Another thing I want to do just to improve accessibility again switcher block input so once the input is in the focus state maybe I press my tab key and it goes to that input I want to select the label and on this label I want to add an outline of two pixels solid. I'm going to use the var again and color and I'm also going to add an outline offset of two pixels. Now if I refresh and I press my tab key you can see currently the input is in focus but it is the label that has the outline and if I press the space bar on my keyboard you can see that the input is checked my styles are applied. If I press the space bar again you can see it goes back to default. So you can either click it like this or you can use the keyboard. So you can see here we didn't even use any JavaScript at all. This is all HTML and CSS taking advantage of the checked pseudo class, taking advantage of the sibling combinator, taking advantage of custom properties like this and many more. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two from it. If you'd love to learn more about combinators in CSS, I have a video on that. You can see it currently on the screen somewhere. You can check that out or you can check out more CSS videos I have on my channel.